Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with the final installment of the Christmas book 2021. Um, I'm doing a voiceover for this because there are so many fireworks going on right now outside the window that I can hear them on my YouTube video if I don't do it this way. Um, I got a lovely sidekick from my niece for Christmas, and that's that white thing that's on the um, the Tim Holtz glass mat. And I am looking for colored paper in order to do the word Merry Christmas with the die. And there you see me putting it through there. I really like this little miniature sidekick because I can do all the small stuff that would go in a small journal very quickly with this. It has a suction pad on the bottom of it. And when you flip that switch towards the top of the screen up there, it clamps down onto the surface so that it doesn't scooch around a lot. Although it does move a teeny bit, but it's not near as much as my cuddle bug. Okay, so you can see I'm trying to get the words Merry Christmas out of the die cut. And there were lots of little teeny weeny pieces. I got them all out, but I had to use a um, sewing pin to get them out because the pokey tool I was using was too fat and wouldn't go through the hole. So the holes were really small. So the only thing I could use was a pin, P-I-N pin. See, and then I, it's just crazy trying to get that stuff out of those dies. All right, so now I'm going to try to figure out where to place it. I wanted to put this on the Santa Claus. It said Merry Christmas over his head, but the red did not go with the red stripes. I tried it on the other one, and it didn't look so good on them either. Tried it on the poinsettias, and the words disappeared in the poinsettias because there was red in the poinsettias. Was it going to work? So I just keep flipping through here thinking, oh, where am I going to put these words? I spent all that time cutting it out. Now where am I going to put it? So I'm looking, 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 trying to figure out where they're going to go. Okay, so this will be the place where they go because you can see them. That is a uh, musical scrapbook paper. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, but I laid them straight out when I did it. Then I kind of put the glue on. And then for some reason... I didn't lay it on there the way that I did it when I first started. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just dotting the glue in strategic places so that it'll stick and not pop up. That is PVA glue inside that little bottle. So what do I do? I put it at an angle. Why? I do not know. When I put it on there, it took up the whole sheet of paper, that little ripped out sheet of um, scrapbook paper sheet music it fit fine if I had to put it straight across but no I thought I was so tricky and put it at a diagonal uh, but it worked in the end it turned out okay so now I'm sitting there looking at it going oh look I got a spot I need to fill in what am I going to do uh oh I got to find something to fill up that spot because that looks really silly there without something in that spot. So I turn off the camera. I go over and look through my die cuts. And I and I, it, I didn't show it, but I cut out a little teeny round ornament. And you can see it there at the bottom by the, the guy's foot. I had some round wire ribbon. I took it and tied it in a knot and clipped the ends off. So it wouldn't be too bulky in the book. I just glued it on top of there to cover up the fact that it was so plain. Again, I have no idea what I was thinking. <laughs> and yes, I've sped the video up two times and some of them are four times because by the time I got done putting all this together, it was like 56 minutes. And honestly, I did not want you guys to sit here for 56 minutes watching me work on three last pages of the book. It just seemed kind of a waste of your time. All right, so I'm still looking for something to go over that Santa Claus's head, and it is just not coming to me. So I take this kind of khaki green color paper, and I'm going to try that Merry Christmas thing one more time. Isn't that, isn't that sidekick cute? 
I like the way it looks on the paper, but what I wanted was the words. And there I go with that pin again. And no, I didn't stick myself, but it was a miracle that I didn't. I'm not particularly fond of weeding stuff, but, you know, this is one of those things. I want to finish my book. So I can see that the words disappear on there and they don't, you just can't see them. I, I tried everything I could think of and you just cannot see those silly words. Brown on brown, no. Over the Santa, no. So I dig around and look for other stuff. Try four or five different papers and nothing made me happy and I gave up. I thought, well, I can cut that on a diagonal and do it. And I thought, no, no. So I'm thumbing through the book, trying everything in there, trying to figure out where to put those silly words now that I cut them out. All right, not that signature. So let's move on to a different one to drive me crazy. I had three pages left. That's what the three fingers were for. And now I'm going to glue one of the three pages. That um, thing that's laying underneath where I'm gluing is part of the page. I'm going to just stick that on the page, and then I'm going to cut around it. I find it's easier to use a straight edge and the knife than it is to use scissors because I'm not very good with the scissors. I'm much better with a straight edge and that little crap knife. I think it does a better job. And it was really tough because I didn't realize how many layers of paper there were when the woman made this page. It took several tries for me to get it undone. And then when I glued it onto the page, then parts of it were coming up. So then I had to glue those down because I, I already had most of it glued flat and I didn't want any stuff to come unglued or to stick up and get caught on something and get ripped off. So there's no Merry Christmas going on that page. You know that, right? <laughs> All right. So I put the post note back on to remind me I have one page left there and then the back page of that one. So I'm going through the images and these are the images that I weeded out of the rest of the images I had in the Christmas stuff. And I'm trying them on for size. That one's too tall, so he's out. And I had that one upside down. I didn't realize it till yeah, see, turned it around. It's supposed to be hanging. <laughs> now I tried different background papers. Nothing works. It doesn't really go with the paper on the other side, but I'm going to keep going because I want to finish this book. I'm down to the last three pages, and I'm getting a little anxious about having all this stuff strewn all over my desk and everywhere in my art room. Okay, so behind the Santa Claus that's on the other side is that same dark blue, navy blue, or whatever color you want to call it, uh, paper. So I thought, well, okay, so I'll just use the same color paper on the other side, even though the green doesn't exactly go with the Santa Claus hold in the little Christmas tree, but it's good enough because I have three pages to go. And finished is better than perfect. I keep telling myself that. One of these days, I'll actually believe it. <laughs> All right, so I look at it, and I think, okay, it's a little crooked, so I'm going to trim some off of it and make it more straight, and then I put it back on there again. I'm like, no, I don't like it. So I'm trying the Merry Christmas again, and I'm like, no, still does not work. I'll push it up. I'll push it down. And I thought, okay, let me cut the white stuff off because maybe that'll look better. I'm cutting away. I stopped at one point and looked at it and went, oh, I didn't cut enough off. So then I cut the rest of the stuff off and decided, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm just done. I slapped that bad boy on there, got that Merry Christmas glued down and moved on. <laughs> Sometimes I make decisions very quickly. Other times I struggle. And sometimes when I, I make the decisions quickly, it turns out well. Other times it's a total disaster. And it's something I just have to look at and live with and remind myself to be a little more patient. 
Again, I keep telling myself that. Got too anxious with the glue, dabbed it off and went, uh, done. All right, now got to move on to this page. Trying those other images that were there before. And I'm trying to figure out how do I get all that on there. Well, I decided that it was too wide, so I would cut the other two spools of ribbon off of there. And then I thought, well, if I cut those off, that's going to look pretty weird. So now I need to fussy cut them. This is like a house um, renovation story. Well, the bathroom looks terrible, so let's fix that. Well, it makes the hallway look bad, so we need to repaint that. And, oh, now the bedroom looks bad, so we have to repaint that. And, you know, how it goes. It's like dominoes. You hit one, and they all fall down. And so here I am, fussy cutting the edges, thinking, oh, well, that'll be okay. I'll just fussy cut the edges and do nothing else. Just wait for it. There are the two I cut off. Looking for background paper. Nope. I don't know. Does it work? Well, let's turn it 15 different directions. Maybe it'll look better. Nope. And there we have it. Did you see that? <laughs> I fussy cut the rest of those silly spools off. I was like, I don't know. That white won't do. So then I fussy cut the rest of it off. And I glued one wayward symbol or one wayward spool. And then I glued down the other one, glued the leftovers. And now I'm left with this big spot in the middle. Nope. Too big. Oh my gosh. I must have cut something out of the video. All right, well, you'll see it in a few minutes. So here I am cutting. Um, I'm going to sew the signatures in. And for some reason, for about 20 minutes, I thought the video was on, and it was not. So this is the three-hole pamphlet st stitch for two very hefty signatures through duct tape. All right, the first one's in. And I'm going to start talking in a little bit in the video so you won't have to listen to the voiceover. Now, signature number two. Had to find the middle. Went too sure. That was a beast to sew in, only because the signatures were super duper bulky, which is Usually my Christmas books are like that, but this is the fattest one of the three I've done. So I'm struggling trying to find that hole in that signature to put it through. Finally got it through there. It's a wonder I didn't stab myself. And I have done that in the past. I have bled for my craft. It's not true when they say there's no crying in crafts. There sure is when you stab yourself with that stinking needle. <laughs> All right, so the second signature's in. I'm tightening up, and it's good to go. All right, so I'm going to start talking through the video. As soon as I tie this knot... I'm tying, 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 and done. Okay, so we're going to do voiceover for the last portion of the book because as I was listening to it, I can hear the TV in the background once again. All right, so I'm explaining here how I found half, or how I found where to uh, placement for the signatures. I took just a random piece of white paper, folded it in half so I could find where the middle was. Then I folded it again inside towards the middle because I think that's where I ended up putting the signatures. 
I was only putting two signatures in. Now, if you take a piece of paper and you fold it in half, and then you fold the two sides in towards the half, that will give you the placement for three signatures. I did not need the half, um, but I only needed it just so I could figure out where the other two were going to go. So when I laid it down on the spine, I looked at the placement before I sewed the signatures in to make sure they were spaced out far enough. And that's what I'm doing there is I'm just explaining about how I folded it up and how I poked the holes in it, how I determined what the um, proper placement would be for it. I'm taking the pen and I'm showing you on here, I'm circling with all those dots that are on there, which ones I ended up using for the book. The spine is one and a fourth inches across. Half should have been a little over, what, three fourths of an inch. But I decided it was easier to take a strip of paper, measure it one and a quarter or get it close to that and just do the folding. That way I didn't have to do any more measuring. Then to poke the holes for the signature, I took the paper, folded it in half so you know exactly where the middle hole will go. Then I took the ends and folded them into the middle. Because I thought I would do it a little up from the bottom. A lot of people will put an inch from the bottom, but my papers were all the same height. So I really didn't need to make it short. And that's what I'm going to explain next is that, that I did not need to fold it again to make it even shorter to figure out where to put the um, second set of holes on the, you know, for the top and the bottom. So I just did all the holes at the same height because all the papers were the same height. Sorry, that big boom, if you could hear it, were my neighbors shooting off fireworks. Of course, it's only 9 o'clock at night. So I took a pokey tool. I folded that up in half, took a pokey tool, and poked holes in it. Oh, my goodness, I just love my neighbors. Um, I took a pokey tool and poked the holes in it because I've had my stuff be wonky in the past. I'm not really good at measuring. Um, well, in my mind, I'm good, but when I look at the papers, I realize I'm not. <laughs> so I decided that I would just fold the paper in half. I slid it in the middle of the signature, and then I poked the holes with the bottom of the signature laying flat on the table, and then just went through the middle pages and poked the holes in it. There I'm explaining how I found the middle and I only needed the two side folds for the signatures because there's only going to be two signatures. You don't need to use the middle when you fold it in half. You only need to use that as a starting point. And it's a whopper. That's the biggest alligator mouth Christmas book I've made yet. <laughs> so essentially what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flip through the book and show you what all I did. That is the medallion that says Santa Claus on it. I really liked it, and I did not want to forget to put that in the book, so I just did it on the inside front cover. There's the house, and no, I have not put anything up there yet. I can't make up my mind, so I'm gonna leave it blank. And it might stay that way for a whole year until next year when I bring the stuff out again and I feel inspired. Right now, I just re feel relieved it's done. <laughs> Those are the pictures from the Prims magazine. I love Prims pictures, the photos. They're so pretty. Of course, I don't make stuff like that, but I just like looking at them. I like the reindeer picture. I will never do another thumb hole like that again. I don't like the way it looks. That was a mistake that I'm hope, I hope I remember not to repeat. And there are the houses. I put a little star up there that was left up for something else I punched out. And I never put anything down the side. I just left it the way it was. And there's a pocket that I took off another page. The only thing that was on the page was that pocket. 
And then there was some kind of a tag type thing I had in my stuff. So I went ahead and just used that. There's the um, sled that I had to cut down. And there's the words ho, ho, ho. And they are stick on, um, stick on alphabet. And I made that a pocket where the little girl's asleep and she's dreaming. And then it says, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. And there's those ornaments that pop up. I just love those silly things. Every time I open the book, I fluff them up every single time. The three snowflakes that are on there are um, rub-ons. I got gifted some Chris two sheets of Christmas rub-ons, and I use them. I did not find a dog to go inside the little house. Maybe next year. And this is the Christmas card from my friends. They're such a cute little family. I never thought they'd leave Tennessee, but their daughters moved to um, outside of uh, Fort Worth, Dallas, and had a grandchild, and grandma and grandpa could not help themselves. <laughs> and I don't blame them. She's very cute. There's a Christmas card I got, I don't know, last year or year before last, and I decided that I would incorporate it in there because I like those beads with the little candy canes on the ends. Or are they stockings? I can't remember. And there's a Christmas card from the UK from my friend Debbie. There's that Christmas poem where I jigged around with it for a while and I just could not make up my mind. I'm still not happy with the way it looks, but it's done. I did not get the carolers in the book. I was so flustered after that one. I decided, yeah, not putting them in. Maybe next year. <laughs> not this year. And there's where I'm explaining how I put the little ornament there because of the way I laid the Christmas words. I was trying to fill in the space. And I figure that's just as good. And there go the fireworks again. These people have more money than cents. And you already saw how I did that page. And I'm explaining about, well, you already know, you already saw it in this video. I think he's such a cute Santa Claus. I love these ornaments. They're beautiful. They were beautifully done. They were a bear to get in there, but I sure do like the way they look. There's a Christmas card from my, one of my closest friends had twins. And that's a card from one of her twin daughters that we both have boxers. And there's, um, there was a Christmas card in there from my friend Cindy. And there's another one from the twins mother, Audrey, with the truck on it. And there's that folded Christmas tree from the other lady. And there's the one where I didn't show you how I finished it. I just took the red paper and then glued the, oh, it's a rub-on for Merry, Merry Christmas. It's a rub-on. Took me four tries of rubbing and rubbing and rubbing to get that bad boy to stick. And even then, I got some stuff that was not quite done well. Totally my fault. And that's it. So... That's all there is for 2021. This is the last project that I had that I wanted to finish before the new year. And it is New Year's Eve. Lord knows my neighbors are shooting off enough fireworks that everybody in the world should hear them. I live in the country where it's legal to fire them off. All right, so I'm going to sign it and date it because I never do that. Because I did not put the year in the book anywhere in there. So I figured the signature would be good enough. And then I did put the year that I did the book. I always forget to find my stuff. You know, I just do it for my pleasure. But maybe somebody in the future will be interested. I don't think so. But, you know. So I think right here I'm wishing you a happy new year. And telling you not to make resolutions that you know you're not going to keep. So this is it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for hanging out and have a happy new year.